halitosis which means bad breath the patient complain or he may complain that any person who is coming near him they complain that there is bad odor coming from his breath this is a very common condition and there are so many causes related to this the cause can be the nose or behind the nose oral cavity or behind the oral cavity that is oropharynx or can be in the throat or can be in the in the voice box near to the voice box or it can be even from the lungs or stomach or can be a systemic cause any of these so to to make it easy for you to understand the reason can be split into either it can be physiological pathological or it can be functional these are the three main headings so we'll see one by one that is first is physiological means this is a person who is suffering from halitosis and he is not a patient the common reasons behind this is those who fast they can experience halitosis and especially normally we take two or three times uh, took food we take two or three times daily and a lot of fluid also and in fasting we don't do any of this so that time the oral cavity it becomes dry and with the they can experience halitosis the other common uh, reasons being those who are in a fatty diet fat diet their their con their diet is not balanced one and it contains more of fat and those who take their intake is more of onion or garlic and it is very common in smokers and in some ladies who are during their pregnancy they may experience halitosis and the same lady it doesn't mean that every period time every menses time they will be having halitosis it need not be like that only sometimes they experience that now coming to the pathological problem this is a patient he has got a problem somewhere somewhere in the body so it can be starting from the oral cavity to or or the nasal cavity or oral cavity up to the stomach or lungs we have to find out the commonest cause being it is related to the dent dentition dental it can be dental uh, dental caries or dental abscess or dental cyst which is, which is getting secondary infected or anything related to dentition and sometimes it what so what happens is the oral cavity when you examine generally when a ent person or a, a normal doctor examines it will be looking perfectly okay but only a dentist or maxillofacial or related dental related doctor can pick it up the commonest cause of this being dental cause the other cause causes being gingivitis scan infection of the gums or multiple oral ulcers or coated tongue for some reason or the person who is using denture but he is not maintaining the denture properly and last it is related to malignancy now coming to see uh, before going to the next topic let me give you one case study this is one patient who has seen so many doctors and last it has been found that this is related to dental and that too after doing so many tests see if you see this one this patient he has been experiencing experiencing halitosis and this x ray this side is normal and here this side you can see a lesion periapical lesion this turned out to be an abscess and you can see bone erosion around this in the coronal view in the axial view now here also same thing now if you see the next one this is the lesion so ct scan can be done cone beam ct scan or ct scan contrast and this ct scan 3d images reconstruction which shows there is a lesion here which is eroding the bone also so see all the dentitions are normal as a at a first look it is looking normal the dentist picked it up now coming to other causes there is oral cavity oral cavity is a oropharynx it can be it can result from uh, chronic uh, tonsillitis or tonsillolith tonsillar stones where they have uh, yellowish spots and most of the patients they try to scrub it out take it out 
and the squeeze it smell it it smells, smells very bad these patients when they have repeated repeatedly when they get tonsillar stones and repeatedly they get infection in the tonsil also they get halitosis and those patients who have abscess formation just above the tonsil which is called as peritonsillar abscess like you see here see this side is normal this side is an abscess so especially when the abscess breaks it starts draining you will get bad smell from the oral cavity now coming to the pharynx you can have severe infection there or there can be infection behind the pharynx which is called as retropharyngeal abscess and last being related to malignancy now related to the nose one common complaint will be a child with one sided nasal discharge and the complaint from the mother will be he has got uh, uh, we are experiencing bad, bad smell loss the commonest cause there will be a foreign body inside second being chronic sinusitis which is going for a long time it doesn't mean that all sinusitis present like this no they also can present like this and one more condition called rhinolith where there will be calcium deposit inside the nose and there will be pus around it gets collected in the nasal cavity so this uh, i have video of my own patients who have come with complaints of just halitosis alone one have been diagnosed as uh, chronic sinusitis and the patient with diagnosis rhino rhinolith i'll show you the video both so before that let me finish this so there is a condition called atrophic rhinitis for some reasons so many reasons related to that the normal structures of the nose are destroyed it doesn't function normally and it can result in halitosis but here the patient doesn't experience that only the others complains they are complain that there is bad smell from your from you when we come near you there is bad smell now there is a condition called ens that is empty nose syndrome this mainly results when for in post operative period especially when we do when they do uh, when they undergo functional endoscopic sinus surgery that is related to the sinuses if suppose a normal structure of the nose is involved in the disease and if it so happens the normal structures are damaged during the surgery they can experience ens empty nose syndrome which also presents as halitosis and the treatment is little it is not that easy to treat these type of patients now if you see this diagram this part is a nose where you have the turbinates just behind the nose this part is called the nasopharynx in the nasopharynx you can get severe infection or you can get a cyst formation which can be secondary infected or it can uh, you can have malignancy there all these can produce halitosis now coming to other causes which is uh, before that I, i have promised you that i'll show you two videos is it not now this is one condition this patient his main complaint was halitosis so a nasal endoscopy was done so the endoscope rigid endoscope was introduced on the left side in the posterior most part you can see pus coming from the left side from the sinus the maxillary sinus here it's tracking down posteriorly going into the oral cavity and this is a pus now the same patient this endoscope which was introduced on the left side when it was introduced on the right side there was multiple polyps along with that there was pus also you can you can have a look you can see this see his main complaint was halitosis and this patient he i asked him multiple number of time do you have nasal block he said no his main complaint was halitosis he gets he gets nose on and off which is there for a long time now the second video here if you see this one the left side which is absolutely absolutely normal that's how it has to be and on the other side there is a right side so left side if you see there is one this is a rhinolith there's a calcium deposit and pus formation around and it was cleared off and proper suctioning was done course of antibodies given was given within 3 days he became okay now coming to causes on the load on the pharynx so normally when it take food it goes through the food pipe it goes into the stomach there is a condition called pharyngeal diverticulum here there will be a pouch formation in the pharynx 
So when whenever the person eats, the patient eats, some amount of food gets collected in the pouch and slowly he will experience bad bad uh, smell that is halitosis and he can he will be throwing it out. He will be vomiting uh, undigested food. Along with that, one of his complaints will be halitosis. Some of the patients, they have hiatus hernia and one of the common causes of halitosis is gastroesophageal reflex disease in simple terminology acid reflex. Now, coming to other causes which is related to lung, either it can be severe bronchitis which is acid which is uh, antibiotic resistant which is going on for long, this chronic bronchitis or it can be uh, more common is lung abscess, bronchiectasis or lung malignancy. This is all related to the lung will be dealt by pulmonologist or interventional pulmonologist or thoracic surgeon if necessary. Now, gastroenterologists, their main part is to see whether the patient has got hiatusenia and what grade it is and whether the patient has got gastritis, whether it is related to halitosis or not. Sometimes it so happens even thiamine deficiency, B1 deficiency can. So, I have already told you uh, so many causes and one more general, few more general conditions like in diabetes mellitus, the patients may, uh, we may experience hearing complaints that they get acetone smell and in liver failure, renal failure, in renal failure, the breath will be uh, like ammonia smell. In liver, pa liver failure patients, it will be fishy smell. Now, physiological I have told you, pathological I have mentioned and functional where, where there is no specific reason and the patient feels or thinks always and he has decided in his mind that there is bad birth from the mouth. It's functional. So, the, so it has been three categories. Now, we have the complaint of the patient. The complaint of the patient will be like how I have mentioned before, the patient experiences or he gets complaint from others that there is bad breath coming from the oral cavity or in his breath. So, slowly what happens? He stops mingling with others because he gets so many complaints from others. There will be social distance, distancing. As and, as and when time goes on and the social distancing increases, he will slowly go into depression. Coming to investigation. Simple cup breath test, we can know that there is a bad smell. But usually, uh, some we can con reconfirm with gas chromatography or even with sulfur monitoring, like volatile sulfur monitoring. See, in the last test, normally the breath, the exhaled air, it is supposed to contain a specific amount of sulfur only. If support, suppose it exceeds that particular amount, we can presume that this halitosis is related to this. This is about the investigation. Now, that coming to treatment. So, cause I have told you, Pathologically, it can be in the nose or behind the nose, oral cavity or oropharynx or hypopharynx, esophagus, stomach or lungs. So, we need nasal endoscopy, naso nasal endoscopy which covers the nose and the nasopharynx, oropharyngoscopy, oro oropharyngolaryngoscopy or sometimes bronchoscopy or sometimes esophagoscopy. And the gastroenterologist, dentist and some, sometimes the pulmonologist, they are going to help us. So, these are the normal investigations you need. So, as far, as far as the dental is concerned, it will start with simple x-ray, plain x-ray and they may need orthopendomogram, which I have already shown you, you can have a look here, orthopendomogram and if needed, cone beam CT scan or CT scan with contrast. And for the lung, it will start with plain chest x-ray. If needed, we will do a CT scan with or without contrast. These are the usual investigation needed to find out the cause of halitosis. Now, coming to the treatment. Physiological, I have given a few examples. As One is fasting, where as soon as the patient breaks the fast, he will be fine. Or during the time of fast, uh, to avoid halitosis, he can gargle two, three times. And those who are taking more of onion and gargle, they can avoid it. And smokers, they have to quit smoking. And the lady who experiences halitosis during uh, during their period time or menses time, they can use nasal uh, oral sprays or any different type of uh, 
um, throat goggles are there. I'll mention about that shortly. They can make you may make use of it. Any any one of them. That's how we manage physiological halitosis. Coming to pathological, wherever the cause is, whatever the cause is, we have to remove the cause. Say for example, dental, they'll deal with the cause, like the one I have told you, as soon as the pus was drained, he became okay. It was drained and antibiotic cause was given. Dental, uh, suppose dental caries and multiple dental caries, then we had to do root canal treatment. Or suppose the patient has got dentures, we have to tease in the proper way of using the dentures. And repeated tonsils, tonsillitis, chronic tonsillitis, if necessary, we have to do surgery. Infectious mononucleosis, we have to go give a course of antibiotic. Tonsillar lith, if with uh, chronic tonsillitis, we have to remove the tonsil. Uh, I mean to say, tonsillectomy has to be done. And uh, pharyngeal pouch, it has to be removed. Acidity, acid reflux, it has to be taken care of. And so many causes I have mentioned related to the lung, it will be taken care of by the pulmonologist. So, the retropharyngeal abscess, wherever you find abscess and if it is later, it has to be drained. Unless you drain and give a course, complete course of antibiotic, it is not going to heal. So, whatever the secondary cause is, we have to remove the cause. Unless we remove the cause, we are not going to treat, we will not be able to treat halitosis. Now, coming to um, the few things which you are supposed to do at home. The commonest cause of halitosis being dental cause. So, dental hygiene is most important. So, you have to brush your teeth twice daily. And uh, the technique of brushing the teeth is very important. Either your dentist will tell you or just check in Google, you can know that. The direction of moving your toothbrush is very important. You have to change your toothbrush every, every three months. And you have to use tongue scrapers also. That is about uh, taking care of your oral cavity. Take, drink plenty of water. Try to avoid caffeine, caffeine or any beverages. If you are a smoker, quit smoking. These are the simple things which need to be done. Now, coming to gargle, mouth gargle or throat gargle. I have written so many of them. So, you can use any one among them. If you need to use, take about 200 or 300 ml of water. Put some four or five leaves, or either tolerance leaves or neem leaves or turmeric, or uh, um, or you can use mint leaves, peppermint leaves, and boil it and leave it for some time. Filter it, and you can do gargling with that. So you have to take 30 ml of that gargle, gargle for at least 30 seconds. Do two or three times and spit it out. And please do not drink, eat or drink for next at least one hour to two hours. So, it has to be maintained in the oral cavity. Though I have told you initially that in spite of doing all the investigation, only in 70% we will be able to come to a diagnosis. In rest 30%, we will not be able to diagnose and the patient will experience halitosis. In that case, the more the, the masking which you do with gargle, you can do at least four times daily. If you chew clove or cinnamon and take it in, even that is going to help you. That is also very good. Likewise, the fennel seeds, that is also very good. Other, see, there are so many commercially available, commercially in the pharmacy, you have so many mouth goggles available. Say like beta adenine goggle, hydrogen peroxide goggle, then you have chlorhexidine goggle. Even all these are helpful. Any one of these you can use. Other alternatives being, you can use oral sprays or any one type of lozenges. It comes in flavors and even even chewing them, normal chewing them. So, this is how we deal with halitosis. So, halitosis, we have primary and uh, uh, physiological, pathological and functional. Like I have mentioned, only in 70%, 60 to 70% we will come to know the reason. In rest 30%, it is idiopathic. It goes off by itself. This patient, the change doctors, sees four so many different doctors to come to a diagnosis, they can get cured from this. For them, the best advice will be follow any one of the most gargle techniques. For the, that masking technique is going to help them a lot. That is because there is no specific cause for uh, halitosis in these type of patients. Thank you so much.